Hello and welcome to this training session. My name is Ashraf Ayad and I'll be working with you today in one of the Modbox features that I totally believe that was uh, underlooked by lots of users. Uh, it's called the Lit uh, Sphere Shader or Lit Sphere Material. Uh, before I start, I would recommend uh, you guys watch the video done by Wayne Robinson. Uh, he done lots of free tutorials for Modbox and you can see them on the modboxhub.com. So check it out. He he did a quick tutorial about the uh, lit sphere shaders. Um, here's just to go over a few tips and tricks or how to control that shader, or just a little bit in, in depth on that shader. So let's get started. To use this material, all you have to do is just right click and assign new material and use lit sphere material. By default, you will get this image here that is called wax.png, which is f uh, located under your install folder under textures lit sphere. So if you want to examine that image here for a quickly, um, just going to go to my installs. And you will notice here, just for quickly, that the highlight is at the top right of the image and the dark area is at the bottom left. But if you look at it in the view, you will see it a little bit shifted. And that's because the actual projection of the uh, shader or the texture that you see in here is coming from the light. So this image is projected through the light on top of your object. So if I click on my object here, uh, sorry, I'm just going to disable that, and I'm going to say show light, and you will see that the light is projecting that image. So if I press the L button and left mouse and hold on to the the screen you'll see that the light is moving and therefore the projection onto that object is is also rotating or changing according to the light so one thing that you want to put in mind if uh, if you want to have that proper projection or if you actually have that proper angle is that you want to match the light tr transformation excuse me to the light and transformation to the perspective transformation so all I'm gonna do now is just show my transformation and I'm just gonna take a note here, I'm just going to simplify this to be zero of my uh, camera rotation and this is what you're looking for, the rotation of the camera and I'm going to copy it to the light so light here is zero just for simplicity here, we just took the same numbers and 21 and now as you can see the light is perfectly aligned with the camera therefore the image will match exactly what you had previously As you already noticed, uh, the uh, texture on the on the material is is basically coming from the image from the image that we used previously. So there's a couple of things that you need to put in mind when you're uh, using this texture files as your uh, source of uh, shading information. Uh, when you place an object, or you, when you place a texture file, make sure that the image has a a, a bounding, or actually it's exceeding its bounding area in here for example if I use a uh, a different texture file and I'm gonna use one of mine here for example and let's examine that texture file in here and you'll see the image or the circle itself fits right within the actual box in here but if you if you examine it here yes it does fit because the light is aligned directly with the camera however if I move the light ever slightly and here you will get a little bit of artifacts in here so in order to get rid of that or to uh, make sure that it goes away you, you need to have your image a little bigger just a slight bigger than the actual uh, box it's, it's contained in so let's let's try that in Photoshop. Here's the image that we used in the previous uh, example in Mudbox. As you can see, the circle fits right exactly within this box. So all I'm just going to do here is just going to copy and paste it, and just make it a slight bigger, just slightly. And save it again, or actually let's save as. and go back to our Mudbox file 
edit the material and I'm just gonna change it to the new one and you'll see now all the artifacts is gone so this is one quick tip for you if you remember when you are creating your own shaders or material libraries uh, always try to make them slightly uh, bigger than the actual container uh, this way you don't have any artifacts or the image will actually bleed on the other side alright so let's do another one when we actually start working from scratch where we create the shader in, in Photoshop So now in Photoshop all I'm going to do is just create a circle in here and with a gradient color which is three, three color simple, very simple stuff I'm just going to use it to give me that illusion of a circle and that will be my shader and if I'm going to save this and really quickly apply it in my Modbox file and you see it come nicely like so but as you can see it this is like flat material or let's call it Lambert if you want to have a little bit of a spec to it we're gonna do the same thing in, in, uh, in Photoshop by just creating a uh, little dot here to represent that like this back here and now it looks somewhat with specularity here. Just dividing it a couple of times and you see it now react nicely to that. Alright, so this was a quick example how to create your files uh, directly from uh, Photoshop. One other tip I'd like to remind you with, if you want to have more metallic material uh, you should add more color variation or hard edges between these two colors uh, so this will give you this chrome or uh, very shiny metal here is an example of how I was uh, referring to with hard differences between color uh, you can see this is a very distinct difference between these two color information so if I use this as my uh, light sphere can get this chrome very nice chrome effect so you can see it with, with, with simple examples like this I created another one I just grabbed it from the net and you will have all these metallic material not only that which is simple tools in Photoshop I can do uh, render for example and I will have totally different effect. I don't even know how that will look like to be honest with you. We'll see how that will, will behave. A very funky color here. Alright, so uh, your your options are unlimited pretty much. Your uh, your sky is the limit. Create any, any sphere, render it in your Maya or Max, whatever it is. If you have a favorite shader that's from any other application, just render it on a sphere and use that to be your uh, lit sphere. And the only other thing is the, uh, the lit sphere will react to the uh, filter, uh, sorry, the, view the viewport filters. So if you have depth of field, you see it's working with it. Tone mapper it will also react to it. Ambient occlusion as well. You might not see it, but it's very subtle. It's right here. Maybe I should increase the strings a little bit so you can can see it. However, the limitation that you should be aware of as well is that it does not cast or receive shadows. Or also, if you have a light sphere like uh, HDR image, HDR image, it will not react to it. So this is the only two limitations that we are uh, facing right now. But other than that, it's a very powerful tool. I would encourage you to use it. At the end, I just like to remind you: whenever you use this uh, type of material, you want to make sure to align your light with the camera information or the camera rotation values. This way, you get the uh, the proper or the expected behavior of that sphere, rather than try to rotate the light to find that right angle. Again, remember it works with a few ports. Sorry, 
so if you have your ambient occlusion you can add it in here and you'll have extra depth of your material well, thank you for listening and hopefully you guys enjoyed this session <laughs>